Okay, hello. Hello everyone who's here. So is it okay with, with the quality with the quality of the video with the picture? Okay, now we start our webinar. So sorry for the delay. I was waiting for some for some people to come to, to this webinar. And uh, the purpose of such such a webinar was just to give a real opportunity for people who really want and need Russian in their everyday life to study it, to participate uh, in uh, various international programs, to really understand how to how to learn and how to study Russian Russian online. So at first, uh, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Viktor Viktor Yushkevich. Uh, I have been teaching Russian for more than five years, and uh, several years ago, me and my partners decided to create something new, uh, a new idea of learning Russian online. Um, still, I can't say it is just a real uh, idea how to learn it online via just a platform. So um, it is somehow uh, blended learning, so to say. What do we understand by by by, by blended learning? So it is uh, a real system uh, where we can meet online. We work independently through a platform, then we exchange our thoughts, meet online and offline if the territory is close to the location we are. This format, I mean the club format, gives an opportunity to be not just a student, be an, an alone enthusiast, so to say, but still it is somehow uh, to be uh, a part of a team, uh, you know, and uh, Sometimes I understand that pupils who come to my classes uh, are a little bit afraid to ask me questions and uh, it really makes me sorry, but uh, still I'm a teacher and they, they are students. Still they usually can consult their, their partners, their fellows, and uh, you know that uh, all together they can find the answer easier uh, and quicker than uh, if they were alone. For example, so um, usually, usually I uh, I'm really interested uh, in the territories uh, people come from. So this time, I know that a lot of people have come from uh, uh, Algeria, for example, from Germany, from uh, uh, Finland, uh, Germany, once again, uh, yeah, so it's Poland, Lithuania. So uh, it really means that uh, the territory that we cover um, with our webinars is so deep and uh, mm, so vast. Um, so it's really, it's really great. So um, let's go further and. Um, um, this webinar uh, had a title which is uh, how to learn uh, Russian quickly and with pleasure and uh, a really interesting thing is that uh, do you what do you think of when I say uh, Russian so which territories do you understand uh, which countries, which people, so, so please. Okay, uh, yeah, so <laughs> most of, of, of the, uh, the answers, they are about, um, they are about uh, Russia, yeah, and Russian Federation, but uh, you should understand that uh, 
the amount of people who live in Russia uh, is only a part uh, of the uh, amount of people who speak Russian. So, uh, for example, we usually forget about the people uh, who live abroad. For example, Russia is surrounded by such countries as uh, Ukraine, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, uh, and uh, Turkmenistan, really. So we can say about Latvia also and uh, uh, people who live in the territories I have just mentioned, they do speak Russian and it means that uh, a lot of people, for example, living in the United States, they also uh, uh, they also speak, uh, speak Russian, uh, so they, so we say, former native speakers uh, moved to another country. So all in all, the amount of people who, who live abroad is about uh, 250 million uh, people. And um, the number who, 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 studies, who studies Russian uh, is also really big. So, uh, well, so if you, if you think that uh, mostly people uh, speaking Russian live in Russia, so uh, let's discuss a little bit why uh, uh, do people uh, study, study Russian uh, as a foreign language and uh, what are the benefits of such a thing. And uh, I have I have prepared some some pieces of information and uh, uh, let's uh, go through this this information. Uh, so there are several reasons that I think are crucial uh, while speaking about the uh, learning Russian. Uh, for example, the first one is the cultural aspect. And uh, people dream about some uh, monuments. They they they're dreaming about uh, um, watching some pieces of arts, uh, for example. Or um, I have met several people who uh, are really keen on uh, reading some uh, some some literature. You know, so we know a, a lot of. Uh, perfect masters such uh, such as Leo Tolstoy, uh, Pushkin, Chekhov, Bunin, and uh, in our classes, in our classes, uh, I uh, I try to uh, share as many uh, poetry, as many pieces pieces of uh, uh, literature that uh, shows the Russian character. You know, so uh, the 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 real Russian. The real Russian culture, so to say, and uh, the second one, the second point, which is also uh, quite interesting. So uh, it's the uh, beauty and modesty uh, of the Russian women, you know. And uh, sometimes talking to foreigners, you know, I I understand that uh, they quickly fall in love with 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 the with the women and. Uh, it means a lot, you know, it means a lot, uh, and uh, uh, it's really funny. Uh, but I know uh, about, uh, a, lot of, a lot of examples uh, when I can say that uh, they made, they made uh, really strong families, you know, and international families, and uh, uh, they are happy enough. <laughs> Uh, the third one is uh, investments or business, and uh, sometimes we can find uh, a lot of examples when people say that ah, Russia is a bad uh, pro 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 pros uh, prospect to invest money in, but uh, still uh, we, we should understand that uh, nevertheless uh, a lot of money are invested uh, every year. Uh, in the Russian economy, and uh, sometimes they say that uh, the profit is quite quite real there. Okay, the next one is the travels journeys, and I mean the people who are fond of traveling uh, have a real opportunity to spend uh, uh, nice days and even months traveling ar around Russia and. Uh, um, by the way, I have recently heard about uh, 
uh, such ideas as traveling um, by train you know they they have uh, a really long railroads from one side to another and uh, it takes about a week to cross to cross the country and uh, i think it, it, it it's really fantastic you know just to uh to live a train life <laughs> you know um changing the scenery uh, every morning you pass any places okay the next one is just uh knowing about uh, some habits some mentality uh so usually uh talking to people i understand that uh a lot of uh russians uh differ from from uh, the Western uh, people you know and uh, the reason is that uh, the culture the cultural aspects uh, uh, then uh, the habits and mentality the way of thinking uh, differs uh, a lot from from what we are, are, are used to you know okay and what are the benefits and uh, so I have enumerated several ideas and uh, uh, for example, while speaking about business, so it means that uh, I this territory uh, can be a really advantageous for, for businessmen to, to invest money in. So when speaking about traveling, it means that uh, we forget about uh, uh, the resemblance that uh, have been left by the um, Soviet Union uh, and the uh, USSR, so to say, and uh, a lot of monuments, uh, a lot of pieces of arts, a lot of places, and uh, even just the people uh, who live in some areas can be the uh, barriers of such such a uh, um, flavor, so to say, of, of this uh, period of time. Okay, and speaking about living abroad, so sometimes uh, people try to uh, have uh, uh, several citizenships and uh, it's really helpful, you know. Okay, and so what are the ways, uh, what are the ways of learning Russian? And uh, uh, it, it's really interesting, you know, so the first one is in, in the classroom. So, and uh, I'm sure that uh, a lot of, a lot of people who, uh, who have ever uh, wanted to change the place so they moved to, to, to other countries they uh, they really felt satis satisfaction because it's, it's something like uh, to start uh, your life from from the, from the uh, blank paper so to say okay so then the private tutor so I, I suppose that uh, uh, a lot of you guys tried uh, finding uh, a private tutor and uh, it means that um, uh, it really works when you when you work uh, face to face with people and uh, uh, it really makes me happy when, when I understand that it really works that one person can invest uh, energy and knowledge uh, into another person uh, then online Russian courses so everyone who has subscribed for uh this webinar uh will get uh, a special gift from me uh it will be a list of uh, ideas where to study russian so i have collected several platforms several websites and uh our website for example also on the list and uh we can offer uh, a wide range of uh, courses for for everyone and I think that it's a real possibility just to choosing the time uh, for, in your schedule. You, you can arrange just a class and uh, have fun, you know, uh, anytime you want. So. Okay, then it's uh, one more thing that uh, I wanted uh, to share with you is just how to... Uh, learn Russian. So I think that it, it was the main purpose uh, uh, of your coming here to the webinar and uh, let's go through the ideas that I have uh, collected for you and uh, uh, the first thing is just uh, very often, very often I try to uh, 
collect uh, materials or different ideas uh, in order to find the easiest and the fastest ways to study r Russian and um, to tell the truth, uh, the uh, shortest course I have lasts just for three months and uh, uh, it means that uh, I really have an opportunity to uh, develop uh, a course in a short period of time. But what does it mean? So it means that you start studying Russian and in 30 days uh, you will uh, understand how to uh, differentiate the words, uh, you will understand how to uh, read, you will understand how to learn in about 90 days uh, you will have an opportunity to speak, to listen, uh, to write and uh, you know that uh, the method we use in our classes is the method of communication so we try to uh, divide our educational pro process into different stages and uh, one of the stages is uh, studying via the platform, online platform, where you just learn some grammar, some vocabulary, uh, train your writing skills, and uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, we have our online classes, group classes, uh, uh, weekday uh, classes, uh, where we just <coughs> use <coughs> sorry the information that we we have learned throughout the week and uh, uh, the speaking practice uh, is about three times a week and uh, the groups are small there from uh, from two to five people and it means that uh, the teacher can work with with each of, 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 of the students and uh, it means that you know, he can pay attention to uh, any drawbacks they have. Okay, and uh, if you if you learn Russian as the second language, you should understand that you should devote uh, as uh, much time uh, as you can. So, and starting learning Russian, uh, you should start from the simple from from simple things and uh, moving step by step forward. And uh, uh, there is a golden rule, you know, in studying Russian. Uh, when you start, you start studying, yeah, yeah, the best uh, way and the best opportunity for you is to start studying in a small chunks. I mean that uh, approximately you have uh, half an hour a day, or you should study half, half an hour a day, uh, but not at once, just sitting and doing exercise, but for example, dividing this uh, process into two, three, four chunks. For example, uh, every person has a pause and so whenever you have uh, a very busy day, uh, you have some breaks, for example, a coffee break or uh, at least um, five minutes to walk in the fresh air. So, and I feel that it can be a real possibility to change, to s switch uh, from one activity to another and to, uh, to start, so to say, uh, learning Russian, so in small period of time, for example, you learn three words, but you you, you do it. Um, so I think I think that it, it's quite clear. Uh, then when you uh, start studying a language, uh, I, I I think that uh, you should immerse yourself in Russian to the maximum level. So uh, when I when I started when I studied uh, different languages. Uh, I try to uh, dive deep into the language. So what does it mean? So you set the phone player uh, and uh, into the Russian language. Then you uh, try to read the news not in the English language but or in your native language but in the Russian one. Because for example, if we use some international broadcasters, Mm, we can find that some of them uh, are already translated in Russian or they have a special just uh, department 
uh, in the Russian Federation or in Ukraine or Georgia or whatever. Then uh, you should study online. So there are several courses online, so we are among them. And uh, I think that when you feel the language every day, when you touch it every day, when you try to um, investigate, so to say, the materials of, they call it, they call it data mining, uh, still you dive deep into the language, you feel it already, yeah, and whenever you practice it every day like a sportsman, so uh, it, it helps you to develop faster. And uh, then it's uh, learn Russian words, so there is a, a very interesting method, uh, it is something I use, I use uh, while studying uh, different languages, for example, you know a new word, for example, it is uh, Chumadan, for example, a, a suitcase, Chumadan, and uh, you try to use this word in your uh, native language, for example, you, you, you do not say that uh, Nora, please uh, uh, fetch uh, fetch me the suitcase. So you say Nora, uh, please uh, fetch me the uh, chamadan, pajalosta. And it means that uh, it means that you um, try to learn the words in the context, and uh, in future, whenever you need this word, uh, you will remember remember it uh, much faster then one more thing is just building your uh, vocabulary with a sketchbook well what does it mean so uh, it, it's really challenging task but uh, sometimes it really works so uh, I really know that people uh, traveling somewhere or going somewhere uh, has a lot around and all the objects uh, which uh, uh, we are surrounded by uh, mean something. For example, I'm in the room now and I have uh, a table in front of me, so stall. Then I have a laptop, uh, notebook. Then I have some papers, bumaga, uh, a mouse, mish, uh, uh, earphones, naushniki. So, glasses, achki, I mean that uh, we put down some words that we think that uh, we will use uh, in any situation, or we would use this word, and uh, then translate. So, there are so many uh, online translators now, and uh, moreover, I have uh, a possibility just to use lingua, and uh, it means a lot for me, you know, and uh, whenever I can translate the word and then I know that I, I, I need it in my life, then I use the method of putting this word in my sentences. So, I mean that every day I learn about 70 new words. And uh, it happens as a tease and uh, because I am interested in, in everything that is around me. And moreover, uh, believe me that you will find... Uh, the beauty around you and uh, it will influence your uh, spirit, you know, and the educational process, I mean, the uh, aim, the goal uh, will be set for you, you know. And by the way, so uh, I wanted to tell you that uh, while studying English, for example, when I was younger, uh, I faced difficulty, you know, and uh, the real problem was that um, I had no goal, uh, I had no interest, I wasn't keen on in, uh, it, and uh, it meant that when I uh, studied, when I was studying, it was something like a hard train, it was difficult for me, but I found a hobby, uh, my hobby was connected with the Russian culture, uh, sorry, with the English culture, and uh, uh, it was really interesting, you know, and uh, by the way, I, uh, I collected some uh, postcards with the castles, yeah, and, uh, so I was interested in, in the history, you know. Okay, and uh, it means that whenever you are interested in it and when you have a goal, for example, some of you are interested in uh, studying language because you want to study there. 
then uh, whenever you uh, whenever you study uh, the Russian language, probably you have some roots. Uh, you can study the language because you like it. For example, it's a real uh, thing for for the brain, you know. And uh, one more thing that uh, can uh, can influence you and uh, uh, make you uh, make you study the language. Uh, so it means that. Uh, uh, you have some businesses, international businesses, and uh, you may be interested in it. Okay, and one more thing. So, uh, have you ever had a, a pen pal? So, it's uh, a common thing uh, when people start studying uh, some languages. Uh, they really appreciate somehow, uh, they really appreciate somehow finding a friend and uh, it really means a lot uh, because it's a native speaker and uh, probably he or she has uh, their own interests and it means that you uh, feel the culture uh, in one city you know in one person and uh, uh, you know and the language uh, is called a mirror of the soul and it means that whenever you communicate to people who are really interesting uh, it may help you to, to feel the, the flavor or the taste of the language. Okay, and speak. You know, sometimes uh, I recommend my students to speak. Uh, I know that some of you have uh, difficulties in reading uh, Russian or even understanding the letters. Uh, I feel that uh, in some period of time, so I think soon, uh, I will record uh, a free course, uh, uh, phonetic course for people who are the um, reading um, reading uh, course where I will teach you uh, speak uh, with the Russian phonetics as well as read uh, as uh, as uh, the natives do, and I think that it would be the first step uh, for your. Um, studying language with pleasure, you know, and uh, traditionally it takes about five days uh, to learn how to read and to pronounce the words. So that's that's why it's just the first time, the initial the initial stage of uh, studying uh, any language. Okay, and uh, one more thing is just uh, uh, for you to understand that. Um, there are some more interesting tips for you I have collected and uh, there are three methods that I sometimes uh, share with my students and um, uh, they depend or they are based on uh, practicing speaking and uh, uh, reading the language. Uh, so I, I, I mean it's the best way uh, and to become the speaker uh, is to use the language every day. And uh, so you can do it either at home or even coming out into the streets and uh, using the language. You know, it, sometimes it's a real challenge because uh, I didn't know about the situation in your countries, but uh, uh, sometimes it's, it's really funny, you know. Uh, because when you start speaking the language, you break the barrier of a fear, you know, and you're uh, not afraid uh, of uh, talking uh, to people, you know, and uh, not known and uh, in pronouncing the words. So I, I think it's a, it's a real challenge, but still it, it, it really works. Um, then, uh, speaking about building the vocabulary, so I have already given you some tips uh, on, this, uh, on this part, but uh, you can uh, pick uh, a lot of words while reading and speaking. And here you may say that, Victor, so it, it, it's a real problem for me to, uh, to read and to speak, but uh, I mean about just the words you find uh, on the text. And, uh, for example, if you find uh, a word Karova and then you find the translation uh, in the dictionary, 
you will find that it's a cow. And uh, this is something that you take any text, any text uh, on the internet, for example, you can go to uh, the newsfeed site, uh, Russian newsfeed site, and then you, you can find plenty of, uh, plenty of such uh, articles there and video files. Uh, and uh, then you build your vocabulary based on any words that you pick pick out of, of the text and the words. Uh, then uh, the next idea is just uh, to interact with people. So why uh, have we created a club format uh, in our school? Uh, I would say that um, the first reason uh, for that is that uh, we need a team of people who support each other. And, uh, uh, you know, sometimes uh, training people only talking to the teacher or to the tutor uh, means that uh, people lose enthusiasm, understanding, okay, so he speaks uh, the language fluently and uh, it means that uh, he is good at it and I am bad at it and I am a loser and mm, they, they lose enthusiasm and... Uh, uh, a real uh, idea, the real, uh, so to say, uh, aim and goals, and uh, it means that uh, their education fails, so to say. Okay, and uh, one more thing is just uh, to uh, to use uh, to use the language in your communication. Uh, but it's not only uh, spoken communication, but also in the written one. And uh, I, will, I would like to tell you a, a really interesting fact. Um, so, by the way, so if you, if you start writing in the language, you can create the... Uh, piece of text quicker. For example, when I study uh, the languages, uh, I start writing. I mean that I put down my thoughts, but translating them uh, from mine, from Russian, for example, uh, into English or in Lithuanian, just word by word, so as I understand it. And it means that when I start speaking in my real life, the system and the uh, the idea of the language is already put into practice. So I think that is clear. Okay, then uh, I'd like you to uh, train pronunciation. So what is uh, training pronunciation? So soon we are going to launch some podcasts and uh, Russian podcasts uh, uh, where people just study listening to the pieces of, uh, of news uh, with uh, the already prepared vocabulary for them and uh, trying to repeat after the native speaker and uh, it means that you will study your phonetics. So at least, so uh, based on my background, so I know that people who uh, listen a lot uh, in the language they are studying uh, start speaking the language uh, in a month, in a month and a half, so approximately. So it means that uh, it really works, it, it, it's really helpful. Then adopt the words from your native language uh, into the language you study. For example, I can give you a real example. Uh, several years ago, I attended uh, an online webinar, so it, was, it wasn't free, it was paid. Uh, the, so I was caught, so to say, hooked by the title, so it said mm, learn 50,000 words, English words, in one minute. Um, it was a challenge, you know, it, it was really interesting for me how it works and uh, I paid the money, I went to the webinar, so the lady came out to the stage saying, guys, uh, you know, um, I have something to, to tell you, you know, and uh, she said that uh, a lot of Russian words uh, which end with tsiya uh, in English are pronounced with the ending shn. 
For example, stancia, station, uh, situatia, situation, uh, ambitia, ambition. So it means that you adopt, adopt your own language uh, into the language you are studying. And it really works, you know. The same method, the same method, we, which is also uh, really interesting. So it is the uh, methods of making uh, associations. And um, so y you find the words uh, uh, which resemble something from your native language. And uh, uh, it means a lot, but the real problem is that not all the people have uh, a really cool imagination and uh, it means that they fail uh, because they can't uh, remember the association they have created for uh, this uh, or that uh, uh, word. Okay, perfect. And uh, the, next, the next thing that I wanted to tell you uh, is uh, that... Mm, the Russian language borrows a lot of words uh, from uh, from other languages, and uh, uh, it really means that uh, when we uh, start studying, for example, the language, we can understand that uh, a really big part of international words is already put into the language. So especially when we speak about the business and uh, uh, business is really international and uh, mm, uh, we can find a lot of examples and uh, uh, I mean that you should pay attention to the words and sometimes while listening and watching uh, the uh, videos or reading the articles you will find the words uh, which resemble the words you already know and so believe me that you will understand them and uh, speaking about the greek words and uh, aqua for example it's international yeah okay nice uh let's move forward and uh, uh somehow uh we spoke about some methods uh which you can start with so when i studied when i started studying english so i tried to uh use different methods easy one for example a stick method for example uh i have a lot of items in my kitchen and i have some stick paper and uh, so we call them stickers and i put down the word in the language, for example, uh, if I have chashka, uh, a cup or uh, a mug, uh, so I put a label on it, and it means that uh, I can have uh, a real possibility to remember it when I take it. Uh, then, uh, when I studied the language, uh, uh, sometimes uh, I used the vocabulary papers. You know, it is uh, it is called somehow a blonde uh, a blonde method um, i mean when you uh, take a piece of paper and uh, then you put down three words on one side for example in russian and uh, on the other side you put down the english translation for it clear what i mean guys clear what i mean and it uh, really means uh, that uh, when we uh, start studying the language, we put the words, oh, it can be a small piece of paper, it doesn't mean that it's a four sheet, uh, you just open it, read, for example, machina, then you think, well, it, it, it is probably a car you just turn the paper understand it. it's a car then you read the translation for example um, a table then you think what is a table probably it's a stool then you turn the paper and you understand that it's not a chair uh, it's not stool but it's a stall yeah so and it means that you try to make your brain work you know and it really works because in your real life, you have no time to think. You should make your brain start at the moment. 
you know this is what I need from you okay the next one is just uh, to go to different countries so yeah sometimes it's difficult to, to, to do but uh, uh, if you have any questions about studying abroad or traveling abroad so uh, you can always contact me with such a, a question so we can make a, a Skype talk and Skype, Skype chat or even on Facebook you can just uh, PM me and uh, it's a real possibility for example if you have uh, a possibility to, to, to uh, travel and live in a family where people uh, have their own uh, way of life, way of thinking and they are native speakers and uh, trying to interfere so they can be your uh, so that they guide around the cities and uh, so it's really useful and challenging and uh, uh, it will help a lot so next summer probably next summer uh, we are going to uh, introduce a summer camp for for people so we are going to invite uh, people both to Lithuania and uh, Belarus, probably Russia, uh, in order to uh, conduct offline classes with, with the participants, as well as to make them uh, feel the atmosphere of the language in the country of, uh, of the language they study. Okay, then one more, one more uh, method that is uh, really interesting uh, is just uh, uh, watching the media and uh, uh, I do not really know whether you uh, watch it every day uh, every time you, you can but uh, sometimes sometimes uh, you know, listening to the Russian speech as a background uh, <laughs> means a lot so I have recently uh, had a very funny story about uh, uh, a territory in the United States where people were 99% uh, uh, Americans and uh, mm, once once the family from Russia came to live there in this in this area uh, and uh, a grandpa came out into the yard and started talking Russian with the neighbors and so they were extremely puzzled because uh, there couldn't be any Russian-speaking people and uh, later they found out that uh, the neighbors uh, took their uh, grandma from, 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 from her house because she uh, had an Alzheimer uh, illness and it, it meant that uh, she was the immigrant, I mean the grandma so uh, about 80 years ago during the Russian Revolution um, her family moved to the United States uh, and she was about two or three years old and uh, started speaking uh, English so she even didn't know that uh, that her parents were Russians uh, and uh, because they, they died in some time and so she was a uh, an orphan so it mean it means that uh, Alzheimer uh, just uh, ruined the cover of the brain and uh, uh, she started speaking the language uh, which was just taught uh, to her, or she, she, she learned it in her childhood. And it's really challenging, you know, so you, you never know <laughs> how it works, but listening to the speech uh, means a lot to, the, to, 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 to people. Okay, one more thing, it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, finding a reliable website uh, with your interest. So I think that uh, mostly uh, every person has uh, an interest, I mean the thing that catches him. For example, I like fishing, my father likes uh, dog hunting, for example, my neighbor uh, likes uh, running or jogging or cycling, so whatever. And uh, whenever you find the uh, audience with, with the same interest, uh, I think that uh, it, will, uh, it will mean a lot. Okay, uh, now we move forward and uh, uh, you can also sign up for uh, an online class and uh, I think that you can, you can find uh, uh, a lot of online classes and uh, uh, I, would, I, I, I would say that um, once a week, I think that once a week starting from September, 
uh, we are going to introduce uh, online classes where we are going to discuss one topic. For example, we can we can start uh, such topic as uh, food next next weekend, and uh, I think I will launch uh, some investigation on, on the Facebook. Uh, which topic is uh, the most interesting for you. But still, so the idea is uh, how to uh, learn the language. Uh, it means that you should touch it, touch it every day and to make it something like the second life <laughs> for you to live it. And uh, whenever you interfere uh, into the language every day, uh, every time you, you can, mm, your level of understanding is is top you know okay then uh there are some more tips from me uh to tell you so i think that uh um, we are going to spend uh, about 10 minutes more discussing the topics and uh, all the rest information which uh, i suppose will be quite useful and interesting for you i will send you uh to your emails or i i, I will even uh, pm uh, the document to, to each of you and uh, uh, so if if it is if it is useful uh, I'd like you to uh, send me a feedback uh, on the information you have learned uh, today you have watched today so uh, I need some fresh ideas uh, to develop uh, our webinars to develop our classes mm, so let's go to to some essential tips for learning Russian and uh, uh, so we have already spoken about some methods, about some ideas. So let's summarize it in, uh, for example, five essential tips uh, to learn Russian. Okay. So uh, sometimes people say that uh, we don't know what to start with. Uh, so studying a language means a lot. Uh, still, I will give you a method. Uh, so, what to start with? So, with the Russian alphabet. So, I think that's not a problem to find the English alphabet online. So, the real thing is that you should listen several times. And, I don't know, so, up to now, I don't have such thing. But I think that I really invented, uh, more invent, create it, uh, and put a load, uh, upload to our website. So, it, it will be somehow there. Mm, understanding how to pronounce the sounds so sometimes i found it, i find in the literature that uh people uh study the alphabet uh as it is and then start reading the text with the words uh, uh with the letters uh, pronouncing them as they are in the alphabet so from the very beginning it's okay so you can pronounce everything uh, but it, it doesn't sound natural. So you just learn how to pronounce the sounds. Okay, let it be so. But in the Russian language, so people never pay attention to the uh, pronunciation so much. So that's why the pronunciation itself can differ a lot. That's why you should try to find, you should try to find the alphabet and learn it by heart. So there are only 33 letters there. And uh, it is quite complicated to remember how to uh, write them. Still, a lot of letters uh, resemble the English language, for example, or uh, when we speak about people from Bel Belgium, um, uh, they have a possibility to have something, uh, something equal, you know. Uh, so uh, whenever you start studying, so alphabet, so you know how to, to put, you know, sometimes people say that uh, Russian handwriting is crazy. Yeah, but to tell the truth, uh, I haven't uh, written, I mean, uh, the text uh, in pen uh, for a long period of time. So uh, now if I, I, if I need some, I, I, I use uh, my laptop to, to, to type a text and that, that's it. Okay, uh, so uh then uh sometimes people say that they have no abilities uh no people have the ability and uh, the main ability they have is laziness and uh, i think uh, i think it was uh, 
some businessman and millionaire, uh, probably Steve Jobs. Uh, I, I don't remember. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I don't remember exactly. Uh, still, he said that whenever you uh, lie on the sofa, uh, dollar can't uh, come between your body uh, and the sofa. So it means that you should just uh, stand up and start doing something. Okay, uh, so there are some principles which are crucial. Uh, there are some principles which are crucial for uh, a self-study. So the the basic principle of organization uh, of a self-study are. So what is the problem? So the person who studies him or herself doesn't know what to do or whenever they know what to do even they have a program they don't have some of the alarm clock so nobody says okay john so it's high time you started uh, completing the exercises so the first time is uh, just you should plan your classes you know even if you study yourself even if you choose the time yourself you should plan the time the second tip is just uh, there should be a game or entertainment. So what is a game or entertainment? It means that I have already mentioned you should find your interest. You should find the audience which is uh, fond of the same thing uh, you do. So you should like it. For example, you can find a lot of magazines, I, I mean online magazines and newspapers and some websites which cover the information you have mm, to learn, for example. Yeah, and, uh, so it's really interesting, and you can even uh, write feedbacks or messages to, to the to the people uh, who are there. So um, I think that that, that is really interesting. Uh, then uh, the best lesson is from uh, from 30 minutes uh, a day. So I think that. At the very beginning, so it's uh, it's easier and more interesting for people yeah, just to to study uh, a short period of time because they are not got uh, they uh, they are not used to it, you know. And uh, it means that it it's like a hard workout, you know. You, you go to to the workout, you work uh, hard, and then you feel exhausted, and tomorrow. I think that tomorrow you won't uh, be so happy about your training as you did yesterday. Okay, then it's um, you should use the uh, senses. For example, some people ask me, so it's, it's, it's a common thing, Victor, they say, Victor, so what is the real uh, idea so which aspect of the language should I learn so and then I understand that uh, people forget about their senses so here so to, sp to speak the language you need to hear to understand the speech so this is listening so you should listen a lot then the sight what does it mean so whenever you find the text whenever you find uh, any information you need to look thoroughly you know you need to look through the material yeah you need to understand how to read the words how to pronounce the words and you use your sight clear so you know the letters and you understand that this is n this is m this is uh, a and uh, the word is num for example yeah uh, to us yeah the next stage, the next stage is the remembering uh, your objectives you stick to. For example, uh, I recommend the students, if you if they have money, uh, to be prepared or get prepared for the international examination. So we have some IELTS examination. So it, it means that you uh, complete uh, some tests and get certificates uh, with the international level of, of English. So the same, the same uh, certificates you can get uh, uh, just uh, uh, checking the level, uh, the level of your Russian uh, um, ability, so Russian knowledge, Russian language knowledge. And uh, it was a real surprise when I started. So, uh, by the way, I have recently got uh, my international certificate as a teacher of Russian. 
uh, so I, I got a very interesting idea that uh, the centers uh, where you can uh, pass this examination uh, are in uh, every country. Almost in every country there is a special place where you can, uh, where you can pass this, this examination. And it's really interesting, you know, and uh, it means that uh, you can pass this examination uh, in future and uh, throughout the period of time uh, you can just uh, study uh, and it, it, it is a real motivation. It's a real motivation because you have a deadline. It's not a long lasting period of time. It's a deadline. Then uh, practice your language skills with, with, with people around, you know, and uh, uh, sometimes it's really, really useful uh, whenever you, are, you get prepared. So, you know, every year, every year we have uh, uh, an opportunity to travel abroad. So, whenever you do not go to the Russian-speaking country, so you can find uh, people online. Uh, for example, you can communicate with them. So, I have a lot of friends abroad and uh, even those who uh, study Russian. Uh, and they tell me, Victor, so... Uh, what about uh, talking tonight and uh, we go to Skype, for example, and uh, chat for half an hour. And uh, I really like it. So why not to try it? So uh, it will help you to uh, learn the language with pleasure because I don't think that you would, would like to talk to the person you, you hate, <laughs> for example. Okay, then um, don't miss the opportunity to learn the history, economy, literature so any aspects of the language so i mean that uh, fortunately or unfortunately there are so many lectures online uh, which are devoted to to different topics and uh, as i promised i will i will send you uh, a list of websites and one of them will be devoted to some lectures online uh, i mean scientific one and if you are a specialist in this area or you are uh, just uh, you are just interested uh, in it uh, so you can uh, really, uh, but it, but it, but it's really helpful, you know, uh, because you can know something something new, something interesting, you know. It's like uh, to read wiki or something like this. <clears throat> so then, uh, speaking about uh, advices for for the beginner, so. I have uh, uh, already uh, decided on several of them. So before you start learning um, foreign languages, uh, you should prepare some materials. This is a really interesting thing, you know. So we are uh, children of uh, high tech, you know. And uh, really, we pretend to have everything uh, in our computers, you know. And... Uh, uh, everything that we have in our computers, it is in, in, in a digital copy, you know? <laughs> and uh, we can't touch the material. So language is something that you can't touch with your fingers. You can't smell. You can uh, you can't uh, feel it. That's why it, the easiest way, if you have such a possibility, I know that uh, people who are for uh greenpeace they 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 will say that uh, victor you are crazy but still uh studying a language you should have a, at least a copy book and at least a pen uh to understand that you have some instruments to to develop so it's really it's really useful uh then uh when you study the book you should study it thoroughly the courses you should study it thoroughly so approximately so in our in our platform we have uh, put the passing level at 80 and traditionally unfortunately people put about half so if you pass the half it's okay no you should be a success at any stage of your education if you don't understand if you don't know go to consult if you if you if you don't understand try to investigate try to uh, dig so to say try to find the real answer so it, it's really useful because because a, a person uh, should learn more than he or she will need in future so it, it's important 
then uh, begin to adopt to 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 adopt what you uh, have just learned. So what are the ways of it? writing? So I think that uh, in some time we will launch such a forum where we will give an opportunity for people to write in Russian. And uh, while writing in Russian, um, tutors and teachers and native speakers will check uh, the uh, complicity of, of, of the text, the uh, idea, the structure, the vocabulary and grammar, and people will t teach uh, not teach, learn, learn from, from their writings. And uh, I have already mentioned that while writing, you make the structure of the language. You uh, learn how to uh, how to study um, mentally and logically. Okay. So, and the next the next interesting thing is reading. Uh, so, um, if you need, I will help you with finding some uh, adopted books. Uh, Adapted, yeah, adapted books, and uh, for example, it's uh, the easier way <laughs> to read uh, some uh, classical literature. Uh, but uh, it's really interesting and challenging because uh, you touch uh, masterpieces, but at the very beginning of your study, it's, it's really uh, make uh, it really makes people feel. Uh, that they have already started making a success, you know. And one more thing is uh, collecting all your questions about the, the, the language and uh, putting them online. So um, I suppose that uh, there is nobody in our world, I mean, um, who has an access to the Internet, uh, who wouldn't like to share uh, the idea. And... Uh, uh, in our courses, so I will put the advertisement on the internet, but uh, I will tell now that uh, we are going to uh, carry out an experiment. And uh, if you want such a possibility, so we uh, will give uh, three free spaces uh, in our groups to the people who uh, really need it. So just if you, if you need uh, free education, so it will be... Uh, a six-month education for free. Uh, you just mention why. Why do you why do you need this uh, free education? What is the aim? What is the goal? And uh, I think that we can uh, agree on some 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 aspects. Uh, I mean that you will have an opportunity to uh, do it uh, in a short period of time and to feel the satisfaction from the very beginning and. Uh, finally, uh, you will become, um, so to say, satisfied with what you with, with what you uh, with what you do, and uh, because you will be surrounded by the people of your levels, of your ideas, of your uh, common interests, and I think it's it's really important. And uh, <clears throat> when we uh, speak about uh, studies. Uh, I'd like you to give some tips from different aspects. For example, uh, how to learn Russian grammar. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, people say, well, I don't need grammar, I need just vocabulary, uh, because I will show with the words table, uh, chair, uh, food, and then uh, people will understand that uh, I want to eat, so I'm hungry, for example. No, but grammar means that you structure your uh, ideas, you structure your speech uh, into a system. That's why one of the basic principles of learning the grammar uh, is just uh, uh, you need to memorize the grammar rules. So, unfortunately, but uh, I think that uh, you will like the method uh, we introduce. So, it is somehow through understanding. So you have a sentence, you have uh, uh, some uh, context around this sentence and uh, you understand the, the structure from the picture. So you don't learn and then implement. You implement and understand why you do it and how you do it. And uh, speaking to my students and former and uh, nowadays students and probably future students, uh, we do all agree that uh, whenever you uh, study the language as a game, 
because we are children, you know, probably adult children, but still um, educational process goes uh, smoother uh, when you do not uh, work uh, under pressure, so to say. Then uh, all the grammar structures are divided in patterns, and you should understand that all the uh, language that you study at the very beginning uh, consists of the, uh, so to say, cliches. And it means that whenever you say Zdravstvite, um, so the cliche, the answer will be Zdravstvite, or it may be Privet. Uh, so then you say Как дела? And then, so some cliches that you understand. У меня есть мяч. Then you, I have a ball. Then you change the word uh, ball into uh, another another word. For example, I have a car, у меня есть машина. And then you have a structure in your head. And it means that at the very beginning you should find as many cliches as you can. Put down them, put down them uh, into your copy book or in some programs. And it will really work. Then speaking about grammar, uh, then you should... Uh, uh, create some written pieces of text and uh, it is very crucial uh, whenever you are at the very beginning of this process probably it will be a real a real difficulty but you can always consult uh, native speakers for example finding a pen pal or just uh, having friends so it depends but still uh, trying to use them in the written communication Okay, when we speak about listening and reading, so it's a real problem for people to develop the skills because uh, you have no visual sights. So it means that uh, uh, you know what to do uh, about the, uh, your native language. But whenever we speak about foreign language, for example, if you listen to the news, do you understand everything? No, unfortunately. That's why podcasts will help you special books. So we have plenty of them, so, and uh, uh, if you need, just, just PM and uh, we will decide on it. Speaking about, uh, about uh, uh, listening, so I will share some website, uh, websites where you can find films, uh, the websites where we, you can find news, the websites you can find some pieces of information, so you should read a lot and listen a lot, please. So if you need any translations, we can find uh, time and uh, to make some short pieces of information, uh, translating the pieces uh, in the authentic uh, in the authentic films uh, or uh, pieces of art. So why not? Why not? It's a challenge even for us to understand it and to uh, give you a possibility just to to, to read and uh, to to feel it. Okay, and uh, there are some more things that I want to tell you and we, we will finish for today. Uh, so it, it is something like uh, about the words. So it's not a secret that you can find uh, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 uh, common words or most used words in the Russian language. So if you need, we can share it with you. And uh, I think that uh, it will be a really interesting thing that you can just learn the words one by one. So traditionally, people say that uh, you can learn about 15 words a day and without any problems. So, um, you know, I have a proposition. So there is such a game. Uh, whenever you start learning the words, uh, it, at first you start uh, five words a day. Then it's six words a day and seven, eight, and nine. And... Um, in a month, training your brain, uh, you will find out that you can learn about 30 words a day or 40 words a day, up to 76. And uh, for example, and uh, I stopped at this figure because more is <laughs> a little hard for me now because uh, being busy and traveling a lot uh, makes me, <laughs> uh, so to say, uh, crazy about about the words, but. So I stopped at 76. Well, good result, I think, but uh, probably you can you can do better. You know. And uh, one more thing is uh, while studying the language, you should uh, understand that it's not only the language; it's also culture. 
some cultural issues which uh, uh, are really uh, important while studying the language. So it's music, it's theater, belly, um, so it's something like uh, handicraft and some customs and pieces of arts, uh, places, museums, monuments, buildings, whatever. But so you should understand that if you study the language, so please uh, find the time to touch it. I mean, not only physically, but so mentally. So watching some pictures, watching some videos uh, about some countries, and uh, to crown to crown the uh, long uh, webinar we have started today, uh, I would like to say that um, fortunately or unfortunately. Uh, Russia itself is supposed to be uh, something like uh, a superpower, crazy. So we are away from uh, politics, you know. And uh, uh, I mean that I uh, initially come from Belarus, uh, which borders to Lithuania and Poland and Ukraine. And uh, we kindly invite you to participate in our programs. Uh, it may be as uh, mm, so either online courses, it can be uh, online consultations, uh, it can be, uh, for example, uh, any chit chat clubs or whatever. So uh, I will send you a list of programs we have, and uh, probably uh, you would choose uh, what you want. So, by the way, everyone who has participated in, in, in this uh, webinar uh, will get a special discount, 20% discount, uh, to the programs we have. And uh, one more thing that I wanted to, to tell you, and then I, I finish the webinar, is that uh, if you have questions, if you really have questions and uh, you want uh, anything to uh, ask me or my colleagues, just, you know, our group in Facebook and uh, mm, Russian to learn uh, and uh, you know me and uh, you can always ask me or consult me and uh, it would be a real pleasure for me to answer. Okay, thank you very much. So today it was just uh, the first webinar uh, in this uh, in this. Uh, Mm, new season, so to say, 2016-2017, and uh, I will share some goals with you. So our aim is to educate more than 1,500 students this year, and uh, to create more than six new courses. And uh, I think that together we can succeed. It. Okay, thank you very much for for your participation. Thank you very much for your commentary. Thank you very much for your attention. So and. Uh, Welcome at Russian to Learn Club. Uh, so looking forward to hearing from you. So thank you very much. See you. Bye bye.